Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Scotland and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good couple of times before. These guys have done some very, very nice beers over the last couple of years and it is quite nice to see them getting a little bit of attention these days. There is a little bit of a hype surrounding this brewery at the moment and based on the previous beers that I've had from these guys, I can say that it's fully justified. So um, yeah, cool to try something new from these guys. I always like trying the new beers from this, this brewery when I make it home to Scotland. So for this one then we are going to head through to Glasgow once again, Yoker to be specific and again I always think of that sketch in the Limmy show where Dee Dee is freaking out on the bus because he's going to Yoker, Dee Dee on the bus. Just every time contextual cues and all that as I always say but for this review we are going to return to Overtone Brewing Company. So this one is one of their very new beers in January of 2021. It's called Can You West? It comes in at 8% ABV and this one is a West Coast double IPA. So um, yeah, this is the first non-hazy IPA that I'm trying from these guys. Fingers crossed it turns out to be a nice one, but I have heard they've done some very, very nice West Coast IPAs in the past. But yeah, this is review number six that I'm doing from Overtone. So far I've had the Rwandan Coffee IPA, the Azaka New England double IPA, the Iman IPA, then the Callista Pills, and then the last one was the Churkas, which was a... New Zealand hopped uh, New England double IPA. So yeah, my very first West Coast IPA from these guys and as you know if you've watched the channel over the last while I'm a huge fan of my West Coast IPAs. So this is one that really piqued my interest when I saw it on the Overtone web shop. Incidentally these guys have got great service on there. Um, I ordered this beer at 3pm one day and then it arrived in the morning on the next day. So um, yeah, if you want some Overtone beers, order them directly from the brewery. Very reasonably priced and I think if you spend over £35 you get uh, free local delivery. I think if it goes into England it, uh, you have to pay a little bit for it, but still very, very good value from them as well. Their four packs are actually very, very good value as well. But uh, yeah, definitely go and check them out. And these guys are definitely one of the Scottish breweries to watch over 2021. I think a lot of the reason they've been getting the hype in recent times is because their beers have gone down into England, whereas in Scotland, they've been around for about two years or so. But they've always been good quality. And as I said, it is nice to see them getting a little bit of attention. But uh, yeah, very curious to see how this one turns out. Hopefully it's another good beer. And I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So let's see how we get on with it. So so as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Overtone Brewing Company before and you will no doubt see more added to that list in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Scottish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to quite regularly at the moment because I am enjoying a little bit of time at home in the motherland, which is always nice. And I will be back in February as well, so you will see more Scottish beers uh, probably in the latter half or to the middle of uh, February actually so you can look forward to those but do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries and things that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated but uh, yeah let's go on to the brewery notes then and tell you a little bit about Overtone Brewing then so Overtone Brewing as I've mentioned to you already are based in Glasgow, Yorker and they were founded back in 2018 by Bo Wei Wang, who is originally from Beijing in China. So he'd been a home brewer for a number of years before founding the brewery, and apparently it takes its name from his love of music. But uh, early on, Bo Wei hired Dan Miller, who's from New Hampshire in New England in the northeast of America. He came in as the head brewer, and he previously worked as a head chef, but also as a brewer in England, New York, and also in Scotland for Six Degrees North. Awesome Belgian-style brewery that I do recommend you check out, actually. You'll see a beer from these guys. Uh, from those guys at some point during uh, during this cycle of Scottish beer reviews. I've got a Pilsner to try from them actually. Uh, but yeah, very good brewery and one I do recommend. Um, but also involved in the brewery is uh, Martin Conaghan who worked in the craft beer scene in New Zealand for quite a long time and he also takes part in the brewing and does various other bits and bobs around the brewery as well. But the brewery itself can be found in the New Albion Industrial Estate in Yoker which is in the western part of central Glasgow, close to Renfrew and to Clyde Bank, Renfrew is where my grandparents were from, um, but the brewery don't actually have a fixed range of beers as far as they say, so they're always brewing different things and experimenting a little bit, but there are certain beers that do seem to appear quite regularly, the Ouija 
IPA is one, Oft has been out a few times and a few of the stouts I think have been rebrewed and stuff like that as well actually. So um, yeah, you will see certain beers being reproduced by the brewery and that is quite nice. I do wonder if at some point though they will have to choose like a flagship IPA if they're going to expand a little bit more but uh, you know Cloudwater uh, stuck with the experimental side of things for quite a long time but these days they do have a core range of course but uh, yeah we'll see how these guys go but uh, like I say they're doing some awesome awesome beers mainly IPAs but they are uh, doing a few different styles and things. I'd love to see a black IPA from these guys at some point. But as of January 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 60 different kinds of beer, mainly IPAs, as I said, mainly New England, hazy type IPAs, but there are, there are a few West Coasters in there. There's a few stouts as well, and I do hope that they add to that in the, the future. There's one or two lager beers have come out of the brewery as well. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about... Um, Overtone Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of those different beers that they've done. So, um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. Very, very curious to see what this one has in store. So, as you can see, it's got that typical... Um, you know, kind of very retro, sort of, it's like the artwork that you get on Overtone, it always reminds me of when you used to fold up the bits of paper and cut the patterns into them. That's what the, their artwork really reminds me of, actually. I don't know what you call that. So if someone knows that in the comments section, let me know below, because that's going to annoy me for the rest of the video now that I don't know the name of that. But um, yeah, nice artwork from these guys once again. As I said, this beer is a very, very new one for... Um, for January of 2021, Canyon West, 8% uh, West Coast Double IPA. It says on the side here, a big citrus forward hot bomb with a solid malt base. This double West Coast combines bitterness and sweetness in an enticing way, making this beer hard to put down. So um, yeah, I think this one will be pretty damn good. But the hops in this beer are Citra, Columbus, Rakao and Simcoe. We'll come back to those in a minute. The malt base is Maris Otter, Cara Gold, Dextrin and White Wheat. And then it's also got a California Ale Yeast in it as well. So yeah, proper West Coast. Citra we know about 14% alpha acid, lovely big uh, kind of mango notes with a lot of fruit complexities into it. Columbus is a quite a popular bittering hop, lovely big spiciness. Rakal comes from New Zealand, that's about 8% alpha acid if I remember rightly, but it's got, um, you know, it's actually quite a low alpha acid one. Quite a few of those New Zealand hops, despite their big fruity characters, are quite low in alpha acid, but about 8%, lovely kind of apricot-y notes and soft tropical fruit from what I remember. Then you've also got Simcoe, which is a classic kind of more oily passion fruit that you'll get out of it in this uh, kind of West Coast IPA. But yeah, 8% West Coast IPA, this one. Kanye West, obviously named after a certain, is he a rapper or a hip-hop artist? I can't even remember. But uh, yeah, not into that. Metalhead all the way. But yeah, 440 millilitres this one. Um, I think I paid again about £6 for this beer, so that is roughly about €7, Euros, um, 70 Swedish kroners for those of you watching over there, and uh, what would it be in US? Maybe about $8 for the can, so yeah, should be quite nice, but for an 8% uh, double IPA, I think this one should be pretty damn good. But uh, yeah, got this direct from the brewery as I said, but let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. Very, very curious to see how this beer turns out. Let's get it out and into the glass. There we go. Oh, that certainly looks like a West Coaster. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, I got to try some really nice West Coasters over the course of 2020, mainly the Pliny, the legendary Pliny of the Elder from Russian River Brewing. It's an awesome, awesome beer. Let's just get the last of this in the glass. But uh, yeah, and that the Pliny of the Elder was really interesting because for me before that, the kind of um, the um, West Coast Double IP would have been the Sierra Nevada Torpedo, which is a very kind of caramelly um, sort of leaning one. But the Pliny of the Elder really showed me the more bready side of uh, the West Coast IPAs and so that was a really nice kind of educational experience and it's just a ridiculously, ridiculously good beer. But this one certainly in terms of its appearance absolutely looks the part of a West Coast IPA. So as you can see the beer is poured with about two thirds finger of a frothy, I would say slightly cream coloured head there. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones uh, going up towards the bottom of the head there but the colour of this beer looks very nice. It's a very light kind of amber colour for me quite rich amber. You can see the beer has a bit of that natural haze that you would normally expect from the West Coast IPAs um, and that probably will be from a mixture of the yeast and the wheat I would think. But yeah, in terms of a West Coast IPA, it certainly looks the part um, and just 
it looks absolutely lovely. So I have to say, very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. But in terms of appearance, nothing overly surprising about this one. But let's have a closer look at that aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Very curious about this beer. Ooh, that's it. That's nice. That really is good. Um, the aroma of this one, it smells very, very authentic. Yeah. That is really, really nice. I have to say I'm curious about the bitterness of this one because quite often these days, when it comes to West Coast IPAs, a lot of the newer brewed versions of these are nowhere near as bitter as the original West Coasters, where quite a few of them, or most of them, were like at least 80 IBUs. Um, probably 70 was the, the minimum that I would have seen from them. But these days they're brewing the, same, the beers with the same malt base and just taking the bitterness down. Um, but yeah... That's the main difference, or that's, well, one of the main differences between the New Englands and the West Coasters. The West Coast always had a lot of early edition hops to get the bitterness right up. Um, where, and then, uh, uh, you know, late, hop, late hopping, basically, in the boil to um, to give you all the flavour and aroma. Remember, the thing when it comes to brewing the beers is that when it comes to bitterness, your... Um, your your bitterness, the overall bitterness of the beer depends on the early addition hops. As you kind of progress through the boil of a beer, usually a West Coast IPA is between 70 and 90 minutes, if I'm remembering rightly. Most IPAs are about that, actually. But yeah, as you progress through, as you progress through the boil, you're going to get a trade-off between bitterness from the hops in favour of the more flavour and aroma uh, elements coming out a little bit later on. So that's definitely got a big role to, um, to play here. Um, so yeah, you can smell this one. This, I think doesn't have so many, um, just going from the aroma, I don't think this one has so many um, early edition hops to be honest with you, but it smells lovely and juicy, the aroma of this beer is very very nice. So let's try and break down the aroma of this one then and and just uh, describe it for you a little bit. But um, yeah, straight away with this beer you do get a little bit of a kind of nice bready base out of this one, you can smell the Maris Otter straight away in this, it's giving you a bit of a white bread, almost a little bit of, little bit of a bread crusty sort of thing, some sweet kind of caramelly notes in there, um, almost a little bit of a kind of, um, it's almost got a wee bit of that Werther's Original type thing to it as well, I've been talking about that in the New England IPAs recently, um, but yeah it has got a wee bit of an almost Werther's Original type quality to it, but you definitely get a wee touch of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit you know out of this one too, but that's Maris Otter um, all the way, it's a beautiful malt that actually, and it's, it's quite nice, but Cara Gold I think will be um, will be adding a little bit more of kind of depth to the brown sugar as well, I can't remember Cara Gold off the top of my head but uh, yeah, the wheat I think will be contributing a little bit to the biscuity side of the beer and the dextrose I think will be giving the beer just a little bit of the uh, kind of smoothness and maybe a little bit of dryness as well come to think of it but yeah the malty side of this beer is very nice soft kind of bready base as I say soft kind of white bread a little bit of bread crust in there then good little bit of sweet straight up caramel in there a wee touch of a kind of Werther's original type note and then you've got some nice biscuity notes as well but the more that you smell of this beer I think the sweeter it becomes actually and um, the malt base on that it's very very authentic and really well done actually so thumbs up to Overtone Brewing um, for that. As I say, I love the colour of this one. Remember, colour is dependent on uh, one, the type of malts you use, two, the length of the boil. If you boil the wort for longer, the sugars caramelise more and you get a darker colour, but it is dependent on the actual type of malts as well. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful smelling beer this one, I have to say. Um, so yeah, in terms of the green side of the beer then, um, let's talk about that before we move on to the fruits. So. The green side of the beer for me, it does have um, quite a nice floral aromaticity to it. You can smell a little bit of the spiciness from the Columbus in this beer. It's not too pungent though, and again, I think this beer really leans towards more late edition hops, whereas the more kind of classic West Coast IPAs would have been like really, really quite pungent in that sense. But then again, remember, since we've been trying them um, in recent times, uh, your, my palate will have changed a hell of a lot since you know 2015, 2016, when those West Coast IPAs were still all the rage. Um, but yeah, um, it does, if you take the aroma in deeply, you do get more and more of that Columbus spiciness out of the beer, which is great. And overall, the green component does lean towards that, a big floral aromatic quality, but then the spiciness comes out too. It's absolutely great. Um, yeah, love it. Um, but there is also a softer grassy component to this one, which is nice. And that just goes together very, very well. Um, I'm surprised they didn't put a little bit of Centennial in it, because Centennial always added a nice kind of zesty quality to uh, the West Coast IPAs. But this one smells as if it's going to be a little bit more oily and juicy in terms of its fruity notes. But Citra and Simcoe 
in fairness, are quite classic mix, and then Rakal just gives will give you a little bit of a lovely bit of depth to the fruit actually. But um, yeah, on the fruity side of things, um, yeah, lots of kind of tropical notes out of this one. I mean. Um, you can, if you take the aroma in deeply, you will get a little bit of a kind of more pungent passion fruit out of it, but soft mangoes all the way. You definitely get the apricots from the, um, you definitely get a bit of apricot, which um, is coming from the Rakal, definitely. Um, you know, I mean, maybe I'm saying, maybe that, that kind of more pungent note is passion fruit, because Rakal and uh, Citra um, and Simcoe are all going to give you that. And usually in a West Coast IPA, um, Simcoe will come across as slightly more oily rather than anything. So yeah, maybe that more pungent fruit is more passion fruity, but yeah, um, kind of more mango-y kind of notes to it. Um, nice little bit of mango-y quality in there. Some soft apricots as well. And there is a wee touch of a kind of zestiness and almost a little bit of gooseberry coming out this one I think. I always find that citra can give you a little bit of a gooseberry and almost lemon limey character and that's far more prominent in the west coast IPAs I think than in the the New England's. Uh, remember these hops really behave differently with different yeasts and with different malts. Uh, you know Simcoe is a good example. Simcoe will give you red fruit if you put it into a black IPA. It will give you a really soft juicy um, passion fruit if you put it in a New England but if you put it in a west coaster like this it's going to give you a really oily kind of character, a uh, really oily passion fruity note. So yeah, this one's really interesting for me. It's interesting to see that side of Citra coming out again with this malt base. So this beer certainly does give you a lot of food for thought if you've been drinking a lot of IPAs recently. The poppy um, makeup of this one though is pretty nice actually. And it's not a million miles away from what was in um, what was in Pliny the Elder, come to think of. I think Pliny the Elder had Amarillo and Centennial in it as well. Very old school hops. But yeah, a lovely, lovely smell in beer, this one. The more that I smell of it, the more I get the big floral aromaticity, the more I get kind of the oiliness of the fruits, and the more uh, sweet it gets on the malt base too. So I really like how this one, um, I really, really like how this one goes together in that sense, but um, big thumbs up to uh, Overtone for the aroma here. Very authentic. Let's have a taste of this beer then and see how we go on. This one is called the Can You West 8% West Coast Double IPA from Overtone Brewing through in Yoker in Glasgow. Really excited about this one. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh yeah, that is nice. That is nice, absolutely. I'm waiting to see if the bitterness builds in this one. I mean, everything about this beer is quite as quite authentic, but yeah, it's it's definitely not quite as bitter as the uh, the original ones were. But in fairness, a lot of the new ones I find as well the bitterness has to build a little bit. But that's a lovely West Coaster, no doubt in my mind about that. You know, solid stuff again from Overtone. Yeah, just awesome, awesome stuff. Um, yeah, um, where to start with this one? Um, when it comes to the West Coast IPAs, um, first impression is that it really is leaning towards that more, it is leaning towards that more kind of bready end of the spectrum, but in fairness, it does kind of sweeten up and oil up in the middle of your palate as well. Um, so I think that works out very well, uh, very, very well too. So yeah. But yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, yeah, oh, just I, I love it. I really do like this one. It's just spot on. So um, yeah, in terms of the the multi base, then let's go with that. So straight away across the, um, the middle of your palate, you get that soft kind of bready note that you would expect of the um, of the Maris Otter. You know, you get that sort of. It's not. White a white bread, but it's not quite a whole meal either. It's almost like somewhere in between. Soft bread notes there, particularly in the middle third of your palate, you really get that. But as you move into the kind of back third of your palate, you can feel the bread is almost just a little bit slicker. I think that's the wheat that's coming out in the back uh, third of your palate. So yeah, you can feel on that as you move into the back third of your palate, the beer just thickens up a wee bit, and it's that slightly smoother wheaty note that's coming out of it. So yeah, that's really interesting how how that happens and you see that in the West Coast IPAs as well because that's not something I would have thought of back in the day when I was reviewing these kind of beers originally. But 
yeah, it really is very, very nice. Um, but yeah, the smooth on the back third of your palate, you can feel that thickness is there. It's really got a bit of smoothness to it as well. As you move further forward, it gets a wee bit, there is a wee bit of an almost kind of graininess there on that borderline between middle third and back third of your tongue. But yeah, um, the wheat really has a nice kind of thick and smooth and almost slick quality on that back third of your palate. But yeah, it does develop a bit of dryness in there. Or almost, yeah, I think it's more dryness is more accurate rather than graininess. But on that borderline there, you get more kind of dryness out of the beer. I wonder if that's what the dextrin is, um, I wonder if that's what the dextrin is giving the um, the beer overall, but yeah, um, on that um, in that kind of middle third of your palate, as I say, you get the bready notes in there, but in the very centre of your tongue, you do get a straight up kind of sweet caramel out of this one. And as you move further out towards the edges of the palate, it's distinctly more. Pardon me, it is distinctly more. I keep getting a dry throat these days. Don't know why, um, but yeah, it <clears throat> it um, it gets a distinctly more. Um, how would you say? Yeah, distinctly more kind of biscuity, McVitie's digestive sort of thing coming out of it, which is uh, which is really interesting. So yeah, it's definitely got that classic um, sort of more bready leaning West Coast IPA type malt base to it. So this is the the malty side of this one is really authentically done, and that is probably the most difficult part of these beers to kind of get right. To be honest with you, so thumbs up to uh, to Overtone for that. Um, but yeah, let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer. Then I don't think there's too much else to talk about with this one. Um, other than that, uh, on the malty side. But yeah, in the back corners of the palate, there's definitely a little touch of earthiness out of this one, which I would suspect is the uh, is the Columbus. Um, Columbus is most likely to be used as the bittering hop in this one. But yeah, as you move further forward along the sides of the beer, uh, along the sides of your palate, actually the beer gives you a little bit more. Uh, there is a slightly herbal thing in there, but as you reach the front kind of corners of the palate, it's distinctly more, it is distinctly more kind of floral. Uh, and aromatic and it does have a bit of that kind of classic spicy note from Columbus but as I said this beer is nowhere near as bitter as some of the more old school West Coast IPAs and it does have a wee bit more bitterness than the New England's it's maybe sitting well we'll talk about that later but it is sitting higher than the New England IPAs we'll come on to that in the mouthfeel I want to sit and ponder it a little bit more but yeah around the front curve of the palate it's distinctly more light and grassy than on that front third of your tongue you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer uh, and this one does have that distinctly west coast oily quality to it which is very nice but yeah it's um it really is a lovely lovely beer from that perspective absolutely um so yeah <clears throat> let's look at that front third of your palate so yeah on the front third of your tongue then as always say Fruity, um, fruity oily esters just roll their way out of it. As you go towards the back of that front third of your palate, you definitely get a slightly stronger grapefruity, passion fruity sort of thing. Um, all three of what I suspect would, you would call the aroma hops in this one can give you a little bit of passion fruit. But I think citrus is the one that's most likely to give you the grapefruit. Then as you move further forward, the more pungent passion fruit you have, I think, will be coming from the, uh, the, the citra in a sense. But then you get the softer passion fruit from the from the Simcoe and I guess partly the Rakal will be giving you a little bit of that as well. But then as you move further forward, you start to get a wee bit of a kind of mangoey note and that will be the, the main component of the citra. And underneath you get the sort of softer apricot-y um, notes out of the beer, which is quite interesting. But then, yeah, as you gradually move forward on that front um, third of your part, the apricot and sort of, um, the, the sort of soft apricot-y and uh, more softer passion fruit, you know, if you like, and mangoes, they do spread further forward. Um, but then on the very kind of front tip of the tongue, if you like, you do start to get a more kind of lemony, zesty vibe out of the beer. And that's most likely to be the citra that's going to contribute to that. I guess the Columbus, in a sense, will maybe add a little bit of zestiness on the very front tip of the tongue. But yeah, uh, just behind the front, the very front tip of your tongue, there is a wee bit of an almost lemoniness uh, to this beer. And as, um, as I say, um, I might have gone as far with this beer just to add a little bit of centennial into it to just amplify that a wee bit because um, yeah I think this beer is it's really solid and I'm, al I'm almost nitpicking here but yeah a wee bit of zestiness I think on this one as well just a wee touch more kind of lemony zestiness I think would just you know click into place that would be really really nice but as it stands it's an absolutely solid beer and I really really like it you guys know how big a fan I am of these west coast IPAs but it's just nice to it's, it's really nice to see one like this that's that's so authentic as I say just a little bit less bitter than some of the old school 
um, examples that you would find of this style. But yeah, um, on that front, that front third of the front third of your tongue, the front ninth of your tongue almost, there is a wee bit of a kind of lemon limey quality there. You might even get a few kind of gooseberry notes there. Um, in the very centre, just behind the tip of your, your tongue as well, and again that's citrus. So it's cool to see that more lemon limey and gooseberry type quality that you can get from citrus as well. Some people always said you could get lychees from citrus, but no, I think more gooseberry and light lemon limey in this particular beer. So yeah, this is an awesome, awesome beer this one, I have to say for sure. But yeah, um, Lovely, lovely stuff, I have to say. Um, in terms of the, uh, you know, I think just in terms of the vibe of the beer overall, like I say, as a West Coaster, more towards the bready kind of spectrum, but I think the sweetness builds up in this beer the later on, um, you know, the further that you go into the aftertaste and you get that nice, you just get a nice wee bit of boozy brown sugar out of it as well. So in that sense, it gets a big thumbs up from me. I really like how it goes together from that, uh, from that perspective. So, yeah. Awesome, awesome stuff. But yeah, let's look at the mouthfeel then. I think we've not got, there isn't really much more to say um, about this one in terms of its flavour profile. It's just very well executed. Um, but yeah, on the um, mouthfeel side of things then, where would we say this one is? Um, yeah, this is a nice big, um, I would say that this beer is kind of, top end of mid-bodied, bottom end of full body, but it's on that kind of end of the spectrum. The carbonation is very smooth, the mouthfeel overall is quite slick and almost oily to a degree. Um, the bitterness, I think it's maybe about 60 IBUs, maybe pushing a little bit more than that. It, the, the bitterness and fairness, I think maybe I was a little bit too hasty in what I said earlier, but I think the, boozy, the, the bitterness of this beer does build up the further that you go into it. You do get a wee bit of alcohol warmth out of this beer as well, but you know, that is a, whole, a kind of trait with these West Coast IPAs, a bit of sweet caramel and a little bit of booziness to them. Actually, that's probably why I like the West Coast IPAs so much, you know, a big Scottish sweet tooth in there. I do like the slightly more boozy note that, uh, that comes out of these. But yeah, about 60 IBUs maybe, 60 IBUs roughly, um, which is great. Malt base is very smooth, but at the same time a little bit more oily, and you've got some lovely just oily fruity characters out of this one. This beer is just really, really well executed and uh, it just kind of goes to show you the strength that they have at Overtone Brewery. This is a, just an awesome, awesome beer for me. Um, potentially my favourite that I've tried so far along with the Rwandan Coffee IPA because that, that beer is just that beer is just insane. That's the one that I would always recommend people try just because it's so different. Um, but the Churkas was very, very good as well actually. So yeah, I've had, you know, I've had some really good beers from Overtone, but this one stands out to me, probably just because it's a style that I very, very much enjoy. The Churk was very, was very nicely done uh, as a New England IPA, and then Rwandan Coffee is great. We'd love to see these guys just do um, a West Coast, uh, sorry, a, a black IPA, and perhaps even a Scotch Ale could be an interesting thing for these guys to, to have a go at as well. But um, yeah, massive thumbs up to Overtone Brewing from this one. Lovely big oily fruitiness as you'd expect. Big, slightly kind of boozy, caramelly malt base to it. Then you've got the big bareness that you want of a West Coast IPA as well. So yeah, thumbs up to this brewery once again, Overtone Brewing Company. And the Can You West certainly can be West. It is very, very good. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Another awesome beer from these guys. I've really enjoyed it. Let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Overtone Brewing Company. We will definitely return to these guys at some point fairly soon. I've got three stouts sitting there to review from them. So it will be nice to try something from the darker end of the spectrum as well. But this was review number six from Overtone Brewing Company, if I remember rightly. And it certainly did not disappoint. The Kanye West 8% West Coast Double IPA uh, from Overtone Brewing Company in Yoker in Glasgow. As I say, let me know your own thoughts on the beer in the comment section below. Let me know your favourite beers are from this brewery. Check out my social media, but most importantly, have a go at some of these Overtone beers. And if you can get the Kanye West, you're not going to be disappointed if, like me, you enjoy these West Coast Double IPAs. Slange it, skull, cheers. Catch you guys on the next one. You will see some stouts from these guys reviewed very, very soon. Cheers.